All right. You good? I'm good. Okay. All right. All right, so in this book, Gods and the Spacemen in the Ancient West, Raymond Drake, he states that the pygmies inhabited Earth for 30 million years. Now, that is a very... Uh, <laughs> A very uh, easy estimate, <laughs> all right, for us. But at least he went back 30 million years, all right? Um, the average individual who is under academic confines would not go no further than 450,000 years ago, all right? That's when they claimed that Homo sapien, sapiens came upon the planet Earth was after that time period. But if that was the case, then we were asked, well, who are they? They claim that these people, known as the pygmies, are the homo erectus, but really they're homo sapiens. So they're, they're trying to give another title to origin, all right, because not only are they the homo erectus and the homo, um, you know, uh, the homo sapien, homo sapien sapien, um, they're all of that, all right? They are the beginning of human, they are the beginning of our human ancestry. They are the oldest people on earth, all right? And the best known pygmies are the Aka, the Ifa, the Mubuti, um, of Central Africa. They're also pygmies in Australia. In fact, that's who the Australians come from, all the pygmies, Thailand, Malaysia, Indonesia, the Philippines, the um, reason why they call themselves Moro, um, Papua New Guinea, and Brazil. The term also includes the Negrito of Southeast Asia, the remains of at least 25 ministry humans who lived between 1,000 and 3,000 years ago were found on the islands of Palu and Micronesia. So this is how you get all of these people throughout the world, the original Australians, the original original Asians, the original people of Latin descent, the original Filipino, the original Indians, the original people of India, because we all come from the Twa or the Anu people. All right? If you don't believe it, we even have a 28 million year old human skeleton in the British Museum in the basement from the Caribbean islands of Guadalupe. And that's in Guadalupe, 28 million years. Now, that is of a pygmy. All right, human, homo sapien. All right, Albert Churchward in his book, Signs and Symbols of Primordial Man, he states that the Twa, who he misnomed the pygmies, are the original and the oldest living people on the face of the planet Earth. The Nile Negroes were probably one of the first of the end root race, that the race were the first and the oldest race of men after the pygmies. All right, this is what Church Charles, um, um, Albert Churchward um, states. Now, in the Hidden Life in Freemasonry, C.W. Ledbetter, he states that the pygmies race is a relic of the old Lemurians and represents the, them more purely than any other people. So not only are um, the ancient um, people that we just seen throughout the world them from the Twa people, the pygmies, but the pygmies are Lemurians. He tells you the science in the hidden life in Freemasonry. So why would you have to go to Freemasonry to find this information? Because they it need a secret. It's a secret. They're not really sharing with the map. You got it. Exactly. Exactly. So the Lemurians at one time was a gigantic people. In other words, they were very tall. Right? This is where you get your um, 7, 8, 9, 12, 15... 25, 36 feet tall people from. These were, at one time, the Lemurians who are the Twa people. But what happened to them? But in the process of dying out, they diminished in size. But it wasn't just the fact that they diminished in size. How did that happen that they diminished in size is the fact that the oxygen content of planet Earth became shrunken. In other words, before... 65 million years ago, the oxygen content of the planet Earth was 35%. After the destruction of the so-called dinosaurs 65 million years ago, we now find that 
the oxygen content is only 21%. All right? And some say that it's down now to 17 So with the oxygen content dwindling, caused the Twa people, who was the, originally the Lamora, but still yet be the same people who produced all of us on planet Earth as we know it today. Does that mean, does that have to do with their food supply as well? Because yeah, I, I, the minerals. I had seen some relatives of mine, mm -hmm. and they were tiny, and I was like, oh, they did the mm -hmm. And she said, no, he, they were malnutrition, mm -hmm. and there was no starch, so that's why his body, he didn't grow the full capacity. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like what you're talking about, but you're talking in terms of oxygen. But if, right. if we don't get the, you know, food and oxygen, right. it's all connected, right. right? So I'm thinking, was I correct in my thinking? Is that kind of it the connects. same thing that just connects? I mean, that is, that, that what he happen. said on the wife's leg. That, that would happen. That would happen too. In the world, she said he was, you know, kind of they had hunger, food issues. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Well, yeah, yeah, that can happen. Okay. Oh, yeah, that can happen. So right here, in the process of dying out, they diminish in size. The African Bushmen, who is known as the San people, S-A-N, San people, um, are also remnants of the same race, but with very mixed blood. The same thing is true of those who are usually called the Aboriginal, what, Australian Aboriginals, except that in their case, they are a very light admix of Aryan blood. Right, if you want to find out more about that, you can go and find the movie um, Bulletproof Fence. All right, Bulletproof Fence, if I'm not mistaken, that's the name of it. All right, and it talks about the Australians and how the Europeans, Albions, came in and colonized Australia and how they obtained the land rights was by having sex with the matriarch in order to get the land uh, from the people. With the throne maker. Right. At one time, the pygmies were spread over a great deal more of Africa than at present. And some of them were the first people to enter Egypt. So we know that the Egyptians was some of their people. We also know that Hawaii had some of them there. Kamehameha the first, the great king who unified the Hawaiian Islands and formally established the Kingdom of Hawaii in 1810. And then his relative, Hawaii, the last queen, Liliu um, Kalani, 1893, these are the remnants of the Lemurians that we were talking about. And they are from Hawaii. All right, they are from Hawaii. Hey, come here, come here, looking like Uncle Ben over here. So we can't deny that. Right. In the book, Lost Cities of Ancient Lemuria in the Pacific, according to David Childress, Hawaii, Fiji Islands, East Island, and some of Los Angeles areas was the last remains of the great Lemurian Empire. The Lemurian descendants are said to be primarily the people of the South Sea and Oceania. In Hawaii, there is one island where only pure-blooded Hawaiians live. They have full Afrikoid features, dark skin, and woolly hair. Now, this is the combination of all of them, as you see. At one time, there was a land mass. Now, they're nothing more than the hilltops, or as we would say, the mountaintops um, of these islands that are left and remain. Everything from Hawaii, Tahiti, East Island, Samoa, um, Fiji, et cetera, et cetera. All at one time was connected. So that's kind of a tropic it was type a tropic. environment where right. we migrated from. Right. Is that the top of Cancer and between the top of Cancer and the bottom of Capricorn? Um, where the original where we migrated from, the people? Located, yeah, location. Yeah, which is tropical. And we went into what we now call Gemini, which is America. America symbolizes um, Gemini. But I'm trying to, mm -hmm. I know the zodiac rule civilization. And so when we talk about cancer and Capricorn later on in after class. No, you know, that's only one sign. So that's like. No, I know, no. I mean, I mean, in terms of how you're 
connecting the two and going right. back. Right, right, right. I, I, I need to be able to connect the dots. I need a little bit of help too. So I can get my visual. I need the, the only visual that I can give you is the fact is that um, you have um, 12 areas on the map in which that would be, um, well, actually six areas on the map in which that would be um, symbolic to um, two signs or the Mother Zodiacus or um, the Zodiac Man, as they refer to it as also. So, um, Capricorn and Cancer are opposite of each other, but actually only one sign. So that would be, you know, somebody to north and south. And so it's the same thing all the way around based on the territory and the area. All right. All right. So here. In the book, 100 Amazing Facts About the Negro by J. Rogers, he says the people of Negro descent living in Asia and Oceania probably exceeded the number of present Negroes population of Africa. The purest Negro types are in Southern Asia. All right? At least that was his belief at the time. All right, so um, we know that according to the Empress, she states that the Washington National Moors, this is a historical synopsis, she states that we um, came from the great island or the empire of Mu, or the Mura, or Lemuria. All right? So it says here, Peru, Mexico, Isabella, a now Cuba, United States of America, uh, Canada, and Alaska, or European inventions, which comprises the island of the cultured Moors the land of the cultured Moors, excuse me, the descendants from the ancient Amaru nation, the Amaru Washita Moors, the fathers of civilization began on this great island, your empire of Mu, the Mura, which about 8,000 years ago, a natural catastrophe overwhelmed that ancient motherland. Some of its survivors made their way to uh, what has since become known as North, Central, and South of Mexico, America. Now, do you now if you notice the United States uh, slash? Hey, peace. She had the house, Debbie. She had the house. Uh huh. Okay. Um, so the United States uh, uh, claims that Hawaii is part of them, as you know. <laughs> All right. That that is funny. Um, because as we just finished seeing, the um, sovereign kingdom of Hawaii uh, has now reestablished itself since 1810. Uh, the Albion, as usual, comes in and trying to overtake the land and then call themselves, um, call the Hawaiian portion part of the United States. But as we just finished seeing, um, they seem to have to co-op our um, our scenes, our lands, all right? As it says, comprises the lands of the cultured Moors, all right? So this Albion has invented these names, but we are the cultured Moors, the Amaru, or Amaru, which you get the term Ameruka, the Moors, all right? This is how it goes. All right. According to James Churchward, the brother of Albert Churchward, who we just finished reading about, James Churchward in his book, Children of Moo, claimed that there were 64 million people who died in the sinking, the Pacific Islands, Hawaii, and et cetera, as we may mention of, or the remnant or the remaining mountain peaks of the lost continent. Precise detailed maps of the lost continent of Moo and Atlantis was found on the stone tablets from pre-Inca civilization in Peru by Dr. Um, Jervier um, Carrera. It says, engraved in stone and photographed by Robert Chorup. In 1972, the United Nations diplomat Farida um, Ishkovic, who was the assistant of the United Nations President Adam Malik, went to Maui, which is Mu, 
Hawaii and researched the Lemurian or Lemura ruins and history and concluded that they were real. So this is not just us saying it, James Church was saying it, but these are the United Nations president, all right, Adam Malik at the time in 1972, um, saying this, and the diplomat in 1972, Farada Ishkovic, they all are saying that we were there, that this was real. So El Lemurian is a misnomer. Right, I just say it's a misnomer because Lemurian, they say it comes from the word lemur, which is a monkey, and they're trying to say that um, um, that the Twa people came from the monkey. That's not true. Oh, okay, so that's why you did it. That yes. was L. Maureen. Uh, exactly. Okay. Put the God on it before game over. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Exactly, exactly. Prior to the cataclysms of 1500 B.C., the civilization of our ancestors, which flourished in from the Americas to Egypt, was known as Atlantis or the Atlantean Empire. All right? So when we talk about the Lemurian Empire, the Atlantean Empire, the Moorish Empire, the Ultima Empire, the uh, the Tartarian Empire, the Holy Roman Empire, all of these various empires are nothing more than extensions of Nubian or melanated people. All right? As far as you're saying, because they conquered, they try to switch it up. Right. Okay. And, and, and um, Brother Hakeem Bey says this right here, that this... Um, disrupted Atlantean Empire was later reunited uni united under the Moorish Empire, which at various times and to varying degrees covered almost the same extent of the of the temper of the uh, temper uh, territory. At the height of the Moorish Empire, there was Moorish dominions in West Africa, North Africa, the um, Mediterranean, all right, Spain, Portugal. Southern France, England, Ireland, Scotland, the Americans from Alaska to Peru. There were also Moorish dominions and rulers in India, Asia, and the Pacific. So if you notice, we ruled the whole damn globe, all right, at one time. So this is how they come in. And here it is from www.move-alantis.com, which is in which is no longer there. Brother Hakeem took his website down, but we got the information before he did. And some report that it was a flood. Noah, um, the Bible, some as earthquakes, Atlantis, others as volcanic. All of these were all various local descriptions of a series of worldwide cataclysm events. As a result of the various cataclysms, there was vast destructions of land and mass inter migrations of peoples in search of new homes. All right, this is an actual glyph of a pre-Inca, as we talked about just a few minutes ago, we read about it, of the pre-Inca um, cataclysm that took place. As you see here, volcanic activity did take place. All right, and as you see, um, they are rolling across the seas, seeking new homes. So some of them escaped, but not all of them. Right. 64 million, according to um, what was said. <laughs> 64 million. All right. So this is why the Empress claims what she claims. All right. She claims. <coughs> she said right here, the Louisiana Purchase, in which her people are identified as the ancient ones, the Empress say their land was never included in any land deal and that it was not part of the Louisiana Purchase. Um, when sold by Spain to France, nor was it bought in 1803 when France rolled it over to the United States of America. She writes, President Thomas Jefferson was well aware of this fraudulent land deal and stated his sentiments at the time. In truth, the land spoken of has never been a 
part of the United States of America. It has always belonged to the ancient ones. This sounds like the same land President Abraham Lincoln was going to return to the Moors after slavery. He called it the Egypt of the West or Central America, the land between the Rocky and the Allegheny Mountains from the Gulf of Mexico up into Canada and on both sides of the Mississippi. In 1848, the Washita, also Ashita, and Turnica nations took their land case before the United States Supreme Court and won their case. There's only one so-called Moorish group that can prove winning of land rights, and that is the Washita. <coughs> Sorry. There's no other group that can actually claim land rights from a actual case won in the United States Supreme Court. All right? And this is under Judge Taney, the same judge who in 1856, 1857 gave his opinion, which was not a legal decision, but it is still used as a legal decision because it was never repealed, nor was it changed. Disputed in court. All right? Right. right. In the tragic Dress Scott case, which basically states there is nothing a black man has that a white man is bound to respect, as well as also the fact is that Negroes and those of African descent are not citizens of the United States, nor will they ever be. All right? This can actually work in your benefit by using that, um, as they say here, legal decision. All right? Which it actually says it was not a legal decision, it was an opinion. But it doesn't matter. Whichever one they want to claim. Because it's on the record. It's it's on on the record. record. It's on the record. It's a case. It ain't been changed. You can still use it. So what part of that? What part of that we need to use? We're not U.S. citizens, no, we ever be. No, the the caption or where we would find it if we want to use it in the legal case. Um, Dred Scott case. Oh, okay. Well, we already used that. There is nothing that black man has that a white man is bound to respect. The result of this opinion meant further slavery and death to the Washington Turnica and other nations. Okay. They was murdered by the tens of thousands, enslaved, ran off their lands. Their names were changed to hide the truth of their history. The Washington became Washington, and Turnica became Turner. Mm. Okay. These, this is how Louisiana Purchase looked. Right. They claimed that in 1803, nearly doubled the nation's size, bought forth by France for $15 million or two and a half cents um, an acre on Jefferson um, Initiative. It won Congress approval after debate over whether the Constitution was valid. Um, and the point is this, is that actually, as the Emperor just finished stating, um, this land case was never, was never all right. Didn't she get one of the um, um, sign-off on that? Yeah, Bush. Okay. Daddy Bush, as they call him. But this, but this shows right here that the lands was never purchased. All right. Um, the fifty million dollars, which was supposed to be in gold, almost four million dollars sunk beneath the ocean floor. Actually, it was three, um, three point seven five um, million. Um, of gold sunk beneath the ocean floor off the coast of, of Florida. Nobody it never knows. reached. It never reached. It's never been found and it's never been reached. So um, that means that the United States never fully paid. Right? Never fully paid. And as you see here, this is Louisiana Purchase, how it looked even before. So um, this is around 1750s, as you see here. All right. That's the huge land, man. Yeah. So as you notice, this is most of Canada, as you see here. Most of um, the states that is eastern, part of those eastern states, as you see here, the same states that they claim, because we know that colonies were nothing more than little towns or areas in which that was next to the seaports. Colonies are not states, but they was known as the 13 colonies. Oh, the Confederate. Okay. All right? 13 colonies are not states. All right? They're colonies. Colonies are towns. All right? That's what they were. They was towns. And they was near the eastern seaboard in which that would give them access in order to do business, conduct business in our territory. 
That's what this is about. This is why it's called the flag is uh, what they call the Star Spangled Banner. It's not a flag. It's a banner, just like it states. It's a banner for commerce. It is for commerce. Now, in that landmark case, the Empress revisited it back June 8th, 1992, in which that she got a letter from the state of Louisiana in which that stated that the landmark case of her ancestors, of our ancestors, for those that are Choctaw and Cherokee, these are our ancestors in which that won this landmark case. All right? Then you caught 10,000 acres of the Maison Rouge grant. Wyckoff and Harrison, 14,000 acres. C.W. Turner, 10,000 acres. C.G. Hershey, 2,000, I think it's 800 acres. Henry Turner, 1,928 acres. Sarah Teller, 5, 519 acres. Kauf and, and Harrison, 14, um, I think that's 16,000 acres. Um, Eliza Whitman, 1,036 acres. Now, who is Eliza Quitman? Eliza Quitman is Eliza Turner, who is the mother of Prophet Noble Draw Ali. All right, but in total, 68,883 acres of land. All right, this is the top portion, mid to top portion of Louisiana, as you see here to the left. Yeah. Most said that people have large portions of land. Mm -hmm. Normally, that's agricultural land. Is right. that incorrect? No, that's that's correct. That's what this one's been doing. But they stole it, right? And they put yeah. houses or whatever they want to put on it. Yeah. And that's, we can go in correctly with, with the correct documents, which the masses are not really privy to, right? Exactly. Okay. So here is one of the documents. This is the part of the landmark case. If you read down in the third paragraph, it says here, Sarah Turner, Eliza Turner, who, remember I told you it was Eliza Quitman, that was her married name, her name, Eliza Turner is her um, maiden name, Henry Turner and George W. Turner are the true and lawful owners of and have great title, good title against the United States. This is how the United States lost that decision. So they are on stolen land. All right, from out of Louisiana, in which that we've seen from the mid to upper portion, all the way into the whole, all the way into Canada, we're talking about over 30 million acres of land. So, is there a way? 30 million acres a, of land. Is there a way people can go in and get it to set up them a home or two acres? We, we have to become more astute, more astute at this science. <clears throat> I'm giving you what we can so that we can do this as a nation. Doing this one person is not going to help. We will have to sue them at a, um, in a class action suit. And we're talking about all those that are deceiving us and have continued to steal our land. All right, because they don't own the land, as we already seen. They may have houses on the land, but that does not uh, mean that they own the land. Right. Here is a grant. This is the Mason Rouge grant that we we're talking about, and this is the actual grant. All right, you can find um, the grant um, in the Empress book, also in Let's Set the Record Straight by Dr. York um, L. Um, this information is in there. All right, so. Do we know that the Moors was here? Well, according to this book, the discovery of America and outgrowth of the conquest of the Moors by the Spaniards. So this is proving that the Moors were here in America before the Spaniards came and they wrote about them. As you see here on the cover, the Spaniards come with their little flags and the indigenous people look at them like, oh my God, who are these cannibals? <laughs> All right. In 1887, 
Florentino, a Mickey No, um, discovered apparently man made heat primitive flint tools, carved bones, and a moderate looking hum human spinal bone in the Placian strata three to five million years old at Monte Homosi, Argentina. He also made some, um, similar finds in Messiocene um, strata in Argentina, five to 25 million years old. So we showed you that the 12 people been on Earth at least 30 million years. We showed you um, a human skeleton dating back to 28 million years ago in the bottom of the British Museum. And my wife and I went to the British Museum back in 2012. Um, no, 2008, right before Obama got elected, a week or so right before Obama got elected, we went to the British Museum okay. in um, um, England. Oh, okay. Um, and when we went there, the, um, we asked the, the um, I guess you say the curator of the museum, if we can go into the basement. He said he would take us into the basement, but the head curator was not there that day. He said, but what he could tell us is that what we seen on top, on the floor of the British Museum was only 20%. The other 80% is in the basement. Why are they hiding it still? I don't All right. Know. Um, and that, and that um, 28 million year old um, skeleton that's in the British Museum was once on display. All right. In the 1900s. So they and they around. and they put it back into the basement because people can't deal with that. Between 1894 to 1921, mineralogists and archaeologists William Neff of Neve um, discovered ancient cities in Mexico. Now, who was in Mexico? We see the gigantic um, um, cabasa heads, uh, known as the Olmecas, the Olmex. The she people, they was there in Mexico, which is part of North America, I might add, um, that dated to the beginning of the Pleistocene era, which was 2.5 million years ago. Some cities, these are cities, was built further into the Tartarian um, era, beneath volcanic ashes. Nevins re re uh, recovered over 2,600 stone tablets as well as modern human skulls that show negroid genetic markers. Nevins Guerrero collection are now in the American Museum of Natural History, which is in New York City, in the Peabody Museum of Harvard University. All right? Now, and what? Harvard is where? In um, Connecticut, if I'm not mistaken, right? Where's Princeton? Um, Princeton is New, I think it's New Jersey. Mm. All right. So, um, this is where this information that he found, which showed Negroid genetic markers. Of course, there was nobody on planet Earth 2.5 million years ago, as we showed you. But us, there was no Asians. There was no Europeans, Albions, white people, as we refer to them as. They showed up later, right? They didn't get here until 6,600 years ago so in the present form that they're in now. And they came from um, tampering with genetics, all right? Now, <laughs> this is another one. This is according to the United States Geological Survey. Um, uh, uh, this was an excavation team led by... Virginia Stein McIntyre in 1989, I think that's 89, human habitation was found existing in Mexico for at least 250,000 to 350,000 years. Now, we just finished seeing that he went back, Nevins went back to 2.5 million years. So McIntyre, she takes off a zero from 2.5 million years to 3.5 million years based on human artifacts and stone tools tested at the um, site of Heyu um, um, Oteco states or site near the city of Pablo, 
Shortly after Dayton of the site was made public, the head of the Mexican Archaeological Department of the Mexican government became very upset at the ancient dates and ordered the Mexican army to close the site and confiscate all artifacts. Stein McIntyre was told to change the date and take a zero off. So they want her to say, no, it's going to be 25,000 to 35,000 years. And even then, that was too much. They wasn't going to just say take off one zero. They were going to say take off two days. They were going to say 2,500 years to 3,500 years. There's no way that they would have let her say 25,000 to 35,000, let alone what she found was 250,000 to 350,000, let alone that the real date in which that William um, Nevins um, just told us um, was 2.5 million years ago. All right, meteorologist William Nevins, he told us it was 2.5 million years ago that he found in that same area. So, once again, they keep talking about us no matter what zero they put or what zero they take away. It doesn't matter about the zero. We was there. All right. Richard Nave, University of Manchester, he says that this is an Africoid or Negroid features, as he claims. This is what he says. He said they have Negroid features. All right. This is what he says right here. The first American, the Brazilian find shows that the new world was discovered tens of thousands of years earlier than previously believed, certainly well before the time of the American Indian. Prehistoric skulls was found buried in layers of soil in Brazilian caves. They are the oldest skulls of America. Lucia um, belongs to a race found historically along the rim of the Indian Ocean, in the islands of South Asia, in East Africa, and in Australia and Malaysia. Well, water in right. preserved that far under preserves it, right? Yes. So as you see here, the islands of South Asia, East Africa, Australia, and Malaysia. It was all these so-called black people from these various areas who mixed back in with each other. To me, this is what Richard Nave says now. He says, to me, is a Negroid face. It was all of the features that would be associated with a Negroid face. The proportion of the face doesn't say anything about it being a mongoloid. And this is a British forensic scientist, Richard Nave, saying this, University of Manchester. All right? Walter Nees, he says the first reaction was not to believe it. Because, but as the results repeated, repeated, and repeated so many times, the results is exactly the same. Think the skulls are very similar to the Australian Aborigines and Africans, and no similarities at all with the Mongoloids in Asia nor with the American Indians. So they both crush this Native American shit. In other words, this so-called um, tail man posing as, uh, as you call him, as you call him the five, right? As you call him the five dollar, the five dollar man. All right. Um, they crushed this whole thing in his argument about these um these fake Indians now, all right? Because they break down the fact that we was already here, right? Black United States Indians, as they refer to us as, and the Paleo Americans. That's who we really refer to, to ourselves as. Um, this is how allegedly looked from the Reconstruction, all right? It was one. So I'd say very similar to Cicely Tyson. I don't even be that far from there. So I mean, had I had that parent, I Get another book. The, well, actually, two books. The first Americans were Africans, documented evidence by um, David M. Hotep, Ph.D., and the Palo American, a primer of ancient American history by Nasir Ali. That's how those crazy and then, Who lived in America 50,000 years ago is a question by Colonel. James Church Ward, as we talked about, he says sculpture tablets recently discovered in Mexico presented startling. And remember now, sculpture tablets. Um, there was 2,600 tablets that was also found by William Nevins, which that he said dated back 2.5 million years ago. All right. Not with the writing, but just with like her picture. No, there was writing. Okay. Yeah. Hieroglyphics. So where is that at? 
Stolen? No, in these museums that we talked about. Oh, stolen. In there. Yeah, in oh. the museum. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the Peabody Library in um, Harvard, and also at the National History in um, New York. So right here, I have seen a statuette of Negroy in the archaeological collection of Mr. Ernesto Franco in Quarto, Ecuador. According to the opinion of local archaeologists, the statuette is at least 20,000 years old. The Architanius black race in America was either gradually mixed with the Indian ones or became extinct. All right, and that's not true. They went into slavery, and we are still here. But this is his explanation because he fell under the same premise that the Negroids just came from Africa 400 years ago. But in a very remote time, Negroes and Negroids were numerous in the New World. And this is from man, God, and civilization, right? What you doing, man? Huh? What you doing? What's up? The Serpents of Wisdom. This correlates by, this is by Mark Amaru Pinkham. This correlates perfectly with um, the Empress, the Return of the Ancient Ones. The Ramu Muru. All right, remember, we are the Amaru people. And so this is the Ramu Amuru, the Serpent Muru, one of the earliest immortal um, serpents from Mu to colonize America was Aramu Amuru, or Amuru Amuru, right? The Serpent Muru, according to legend, my mo moments before Mu's final demise, the Serpent Muru, along with his consort, Aramu Amara, boarded an airship and headed to South America with a cargo of sacred records and artifacts, including a huge golden sun disk. Everybody All right. The mountains of South America and the Andes resonate to the same yin energy of vibration, excuse me, as their beloved Mu, in which they considered suitable for the preservation of the Lemurian culture. They were also home of the city of um, Hatiti, one of the planetary headquarters of the Solar Brotherhood, an organization of Rama, of Ramu, excuse me, Moru, has been a high-ranking member of Omu. Then Amaro Ka is, is translated as the land of the serpents in the book. So Amaro Ka is known as the land of the serpents. Being situated between the Atlantis and Lemuria made the Americas being a stepping stone and permanent destination for the serpent colonists traveling from both motherlands. It was also a favorite destination for extraterrestrial serpents arriving from Venus and other parts of the cosmos. According to the descendants of the early Lemurian record keepers, the Andy Elders, the entire American landmass was anciently known as Amaraka, the land of the immortals, or the land of the wise serpents. The title Amaraka is derived from the Unquashuan um, uh, Lemurian word Amaru, meaning snake or serpent. The Quashuan the language of the Inca is derived from the Runa Sima, the primal tongue spoken on Lemuria, and ends in the syllable Ka, which denotes both serpent and wisdom, apparently echoing the recollection of the Andy Elders. H.P. Um, Bavasky, Amanda Bavasky, maintained that the secret doctrine that America is referred to in the Hindu Purana legend of Potala the kingdom of the Nagas. So you are in the kingdom of the Nagas. This is America. The kingdom of the Nagas. All right? And so when we see the word Maru, as we just seen, and then we go to what's the Universal Dictionary in 1937, it tells you the name of America and where it derived from, and it says an Aboriginal, as we've been talking about the whole time, 
of one of the various copper colored natives found on the American continent by the descendants of European settlers. The following is the original application of the name Meru. Meru. All right? And Meru means the guardians of. This is even coming from the teachings of Patahotep, the oldest book in the world by Asa G. Hilliard. All right? Many historians allege that the honor and credit went to Americo Vespusky as explorer, or explorer as we call him. Colin, who is uh, Columbus, did not discover anything, nor did Americo Vespusky, nor did they European name it. The word America was developed from the Metunetcher name Maru, as we showed you, which means the leader, chief, ruler. This is why uh, the president is known as the chief or the ruler of the free world. Right? The ruler and the commander, as he's called. All of this is talking about the head of America. The word America is how the Greeks call Maru. All right? Who pronounced it Amaru Kos? From the South American Indians, Tupac Amaru. The word America bears no relevance whatsoever to America of species. This word is also borrowed by the Arabic language and is called Amir, meaning ruler, chief governor, prince, etc. The Europeans' latest corruption of the word Meru reads Moro. If Cologne, Columbus, discovered America, why then does Vespusky enjoy the credit and the honor of having it named after him? Why is it called, oh, this is Vespusky? Oh, yeah, it's trash. This is the country of Vespusky. You, you can do this. You All right. Can this. Then we have Meru, Mary, which is Meru, chief director overseer. More about right. Then you have even in the Indian literature, it says Maru of Indian literature is none other than the Moro or Sheba of the Sudan, a primeval Maru that was long ago lost to cataclysm. The four kingdoms of the Saka was Mega, Manga, Masaka, Mamsa, and Mandaga. The Manga, the, the magicians of the Manka, of the uh, Maker, of the Persian inscriptions. The Saka, um, the Sakas in the Mahabharata and uh, are called the uh, the Kastriya. The Mandaga and the Manda also refers to the Manda and the Mandis. These Mandians has a four-parent uh, family connection with the ancient Mandi speakers of Africa, especially the Mandinka or the Mandin who often accommodated the Dravidians out of Middle Africa into Asia. This explains the close relationship between the Edomites and the Mandian language. The Kushite and the first cousins, the Kushite Mandi kingdom line of the Olmec Asians traveled to the southeast of West Nubia, Sudan, and formed the ancient kingdoms of Maya, Incas, the Arawak, the Caribs and the Chicoquania in South America. So that we are all the same people. Right? We're all the same people. Right? Stolen Legacy puts this out. To about the Moors, native of Mauritania, North Africa invaded Spain and took with them the Egyptian culture which they had preserved. Knowledge in the ancient days was centralized, i.e. it belonged to a common parenting system, i.e. the wisdom teaching or mysteries of Egypt. All right, this is by George G. James. All right, so we keep seeing it over and over and over again. All right, even on the steel that we've seen in the British Museum. All right, we've seen the word more on the on the um, the Palomar steel, and the title more was that of a high priest of Anu. And who is Anu? Anu are the same people known as the known as these people here. Same exact people. No matter where we go, we keep finding the same information. These are the Anu people, the so-called Twa people. And these are the so-called Anu people. All right. This is what we have to realize. All right. So these are the first people. The word Anu, um, allegedly in the Sumerian text, means those who come from heaven to earth. All right. This is what we find. All right. So those same tribes that we get are the same ones that we find later on 
the Cherokee, Choctaw Creek, the Chickasaw, all right, the Seminoles, all right, over and over again. You find these same connections. I need you to help me find some people. Um, All right. I got a question. The Mississippi Mound State. Mm -hmm. Is that locked off? Can we visit it? I know yeah, some people, they, they shut down. You know, I'm trying to figure out what's still accessible and what has been done. It should still be open. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Open the Mountain State. Mm -hmm. Open the Mountain Mound. Um, this is out of your book. The Edible Mound. This is out of your book. Mm -hmm. The Edible working. Mound. Um, Town Creek Mound. Um, the Serpent Mound. The Cahokia Mound. So all of them, they've been, been ravaged. We, no. They, they're still in good condition. We've been to all of them. We've been to all of these mounds. Um, You're going to have to. Well, well, I mean, that's educational. I mean, you know. Well, we might need to do it before October is out there. Okay. They put things back online right after the election. Right. So here's a statue of an you know, Omeka who looks basically identical to Martin Luther the King. All right. And that's no coincidence because Martin Luther King told us some very important things. All right? This is a letter from Birmingham jail. He said, we will reach the goal of freedom in Birmingham and all over the nation because the goal of America is freedom. Abuse and scorn though we be, our destiny is tied up with the destiny of America. Before the pilgrims landed at Plymouth, we were here. Now this is the same exact phrase <laughs> that Malcolm said. Malcolm said, we didn't land on Plymouth Rock. My brothers and sisters, Plymouth Rock landed on us. So, Martin Luther King said it. Before the pilgrims landed at Plymouth, we was here. So this is April the 16th, 1963. All right. So he said the same thing. He also said, and I have a dream speech, that 100 years later, the Negro still is not free, languishing in the corners of American society and finds himself in exile in his own land, in his own land. So Martin Luther King might have been a Mason, but he didn't tell you no lie, all right? Matter of fact, he goes on. Um, this is also him talking to Harry Belafonte. He said, um, Harry Belafonte asked him, what's the matter, Martin? Um, you seem very agitated. He said, well... I am because I've come upon a thought that I did not know how to deal with at this moment. And of course, he said, I said, oh, well, what is it? He said, we fought long for integration. We look like we're going to get it. I think we get the laws, he said. But I'm afraid that I come upon something that I don't know quite what to do with. I'm afraid that we're integrated into a burning house. So he basically broke down that we're integrated into a burning house. He realized that. He realized that. All right? Just like the sun when you go out, the house is on fire. Right. Right. The roof. The roof. The roof is on fire. We don't need no water. Let that motherfucker burn. Burn up. Burn! All right, so that's what's going on. Now we in it. Now, now <laughs> we got to let that joker burn, right? <laughs> Wait, you got a bulletproof vest for you, <laughs> a fireproof um, uh, uh, clothing for you, I should say. All right, that's your nationality. <laughs> that's your nationality. All right, because you do not have to be a Negro. But right. the mere sign that you're a Negro indicates hey. that you are, right? Yeah. Well, it, it indicates... Uh, uh, you want a necklace? Yeah. Right. All right, so... Um, right here in the book, what they never told you in history class... It says the black guys of ancient America 
And over here you have Ra, um, R. A. Jurassic, and he says, ancient Egyptians and Chinese in America has pointed out the black began his career in America not as slave but as master. Right. So once again, over and over again, we see more and more proof of this. Matter of fact, he says the first Americans were black. This is according to Latin author C.C. McQuees, yeah. all right, explains the strong possibility that black people were the first people in America out of which later came the red American race. It is likely that we repeat long ago the useful history was all, that a useful America was also a Negro continent and that the Ultimas of Mexico, the Turacos of Haiti, and the Manataya, and the Mataya of Brazil, and the Albinos of um, Panama or the remains of the Aboriginal Negro race out of which later developed or later developed uh, uh, which developed later which is known as the red or American race right this is from um, Est, um, Estudios um, Aquelios Ghost um, yeah, uh, Ethnographical right? Volume 1 Madrid 1920 all right. Um, Unexpected Faces in Ancient America by Professor Alexander von Wootenhout. Um, He says the presence of Negroes with the trade masters in America before Columbus. All right. So he's saying that there was Negroes traveling um, back and forth between Africa and America before even Columbus came. All right. Um, so we can keep showing you this over and over again and, it can, and, and they keep telling us the same information. No matter what, keeps going right back to us being Aboriginal Americans, indigenous to this land mass. All right. Omega heads, 1500 to 1000 BC. Notice the dates of these heads correspond exactly with the dates of the destruction of Atlantis, 1500 BC. I right. get these books that African presence in ancient America. They came before Columbus by um, Dr. Ivan von Sertima. And also by Floyd W. Hayes the third, the African presence in America before Columbus. All right. These are the heads in which they, they was finding in Mexico. Some they reburied because they was like, Who my oh God. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It was too powerful for them. Yeah. They to exactly. Show other people. Okay. Yeah, they didn't want to show other people this information. So they found twenty two of these heads thus far. All right. Now, people say, well, there was nobody in ancient Egypt in which there wore these. Well, yes, there was. The 12 wore these. 12 wore these um, same type of helmets, and it's right there um, in um, Egypt. All right? And we showed you who the 12 were. And so the Omex was related to them, except the Omex might have been part of the taller branch of them. And we've seen who's the Lemurians, is how all of this is connected. All right. We see um, the same type of face in the works in um, Arabia. All right. It's in Arabia. All right. So here it is cliche Arabian carved monuments directly to the rock in many places throughout Arabia. Here we see a rock carved mo mon monument which looks like an Omec head. The feature shows beyond a shadow of a doubt that he was one of our ancestors. This was built by the ancient Kushites of Arabia who built many monolithic structures throughout Arabia. It is beginning to become clear that Kush that began Nimrod was the Kush located in Arabia. Apparently, I don't have the right story of Nimrod. Uh, according to the Bible. It's, it's, it's allegorical in a sense. But Nimrod is the grandson of, um, is the son of Cush, the grandson of Ham. That's what the that's what the Bible talking about. Ham is Cam, which is Egypt. Cush is is Ethiopia. Because he was trying to get to God. Right, 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 right. Is that correct or incorrect? Uh, allegedly. Incorrect. No, that's the way. That's what they say that he built on um, the Tower of Babel. The Tower of Babel came by way of him in the Sumerian. Right. This head dates to approximately 1500 BC, 1000 BC also. The foundation 
of archaeology and related science as we know it presently were laid out in the middle 1800s. This was during the time when Europeans were perfecting their worldwide, uh, worldwide white supremacy paradigm. The scholars in various fields during this time took the position, all right, that um, to hide these particular um, faces and um, heads, right? Um, the Omex statues from Tres Sopotis, Mexico. The long shaft um, behind the head was most likely inserted into a hole in the wall of a temple and ceremonial basketball court. All right. This is a figure known as the tenon. Um, these um, may have, have been used as the ball court markers, which was inserted in the wall, so the bust so um, shown here um, protruded from the wall. It is carved from the pitted volcanic stone it comes from Tres Sopote um, Veracruz. It is dated to 1600 BC. It looks very similar to the tenon pick in volume issue one, which they is... They be very strong people to be able to lift that. Yeah, yeah. In my book, The Pre-Colonization of the Americas by the African Moors, um, I write down, it is an archaeological find, a fact that the ancient Kushites were a colony of Ethiopia and Egyptians that colonized portions of West Africa, Sumeria, and China. All right? A professor by the name of George Rawlinson stated that linguistically, or the linguistic language discovered tends to show of a um, Kushite dynasty that did extend itself from Abyssinia to India. The whole Palencia, Palencia um, peninsula of India was inhabited by Africans. Africans, through meaning, was separated into Greek, where one nation in the world was their land. All right. All right, so we're seeing this over and over again. All right, Dr. Clyde Williams, he says in 1300, many Malians sailed to the Americas. Although most Malians settled to Brazil, Mexico, and built the mounds along the Mississippi, some Malians settled in Florida. All right, this is um, Abu Bakari II, an image of him, a likeness of him, in which that um, allegedly in 1311 through 1313, um, he sailed with 2,200 ships in which they, they came here to the Americas. All right, so just imagine, um, let's say there was 50 people on each ship of 22 hundred ships. We're talking about um, at least, uh, shoot, a hundred thousand people. All right. That's what we're talking about. Almost a hundred thousand people. More. All right. You can not see them like that anymore. No. If there was a hundred people on each ship, then we're talking about 220, um, um, 220,000 people. All right, these are cities that he brought over here. And this is the area that they came from, what is known as the Ghana, Mali, Songhai um, Empire, um, all right, to the Ashati, the Borno, um, the Katni, all of these areas. All right, here it is right here for a better look. As you see, Timbuktu is in the center. And from out of Timbuktu, as you see, Mauritania, as you see there, um, Timbuktu, which is Mali, uh, you see parts of Benin, um, part of Burkina um, Faso, uh, part of Nigeria, Niger, all right, Koti, Guinea, um, Senegal, etc. All right, all of this, that was the empire. The African, this was the empires of the Moors. They stretched through that whole area. The Africans, Arab, Persian, Berbers, this is the Moors. All right, in the book, Christopher Columbus and the African Holocaust, Slavery and the Rise of European Capitalism, um, it was renamed the African Columbus, um, Christopher Columbus and the Myth of the New World. Um, this is what um, Dr. John Henry Clark states. It must also be added that Marco Van Spiesky on his voyage to America's witness, the Mandingos of Mali, who are known as the Omex, and Songhai Empire, later identified as the Moroccan Empire, out of which um, out in the Atlantic returning to Africa. So here it is, one of our greatest said African minds and historians, 
John Henry Clark stated that the Mandingos of Mali, all right, the Olmecs, and the Songhai Empire was later identified as the Moroccan Empire. Also note that they were returning to Africa. Thus, we can conclude from America. All right? So this is how all of this is connected. All right? Um, are there any questions concerning anything that we're going over tonight? I would be very interested in that. And I think it would be very educational for the children to be that for myself because sometimes we go places and they speak to us. You know, like you make your hair on your arm and your skin. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Anyway. You're right. Well, we use books and mouths all the time. You just got to get back into it. We got to, um, we were trying to get a um, bus out in, uh, we was calling different bus tour buses so that we can start, um, you know, bringing people, you know, on these trips. You know, the same way that, um, uh, the same way in which that, uh, um, uh, with his name, goes to Egypt. No, not just Epidishi, but um, also, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Dr. Ben used to go. Yeah, Dr. Ben, but he's up his student. Yeah, Dr. Ben, Ashwa Kwesi, like the way that they go to um, Egypt oh, every okay. like they go to Egypt every year, Ethiopia every year. Did you go on the tour with him? No, we were supposed to be going on the tour um, with, um, with him. Okay, well, anyway, I think I... Saw him. He does some stuff too, saying stuff come from us. Mm -hmm. If I if yeah, I don't yeah. know that brother very well, so right. I, I just see him a lot. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, I got you. So I just knew I knew if D she through Doctor Ben because right. I seen him like him in his apprentice and right, you know, right, right. And through uh, what's that brother in Harlem that put everybody on TV? As a right. No, the other guy. Um, I know what you're talking about. He does the debate. Oh, you're talking about Sean Nevin? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's how I start seeing him. Okay. I've been, okay. In, I've been in New York a couple of times and I didn't know nothing about the 125th Street horse. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, I should have been trying to get there. Yeah. I ain't been there yet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, anyway. you late for that one. Yeah, well, that's, <laughs> on, that's on the list. I got a lot, a lot of ground to cover. Right. Um, Bree, do y'all have any um, questions about anything that we went over? I'm good. Anybody got any questions? Let me check the chat. How you feeling? Y'all still no. in the building? Y'all still here? No questions. Yeah, y'all good? You good? Yeah. Any anything um, spark your mind? Any new information you come across tonight? Oh, the Oh, somebody was talking. Oh, Rihanna was talking. Uh, but she was just telling me about the quote: "Black skinned people had come from the southeast, so it's it's like kind of intriguing to her to for her to study the southeast. Like, where is the southeast?" You know, she gonna study people of the south, southeast. Oh, the southeast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that. Yeah, that is um talking about um, uh, basically, when he was in. Well, this is from the book by Leo Weiner, um, Africans and the Discovery of America. Um, the southeast, according to them, at this time was talking about near Cuba. Oh, that makes sense. Near the Caribbean um, island. <laughs> this is where he seen them at. Mm, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, what were you saying earlier about the about Mexico? Uh, when um, how they was finding the heads in Mexico. Right. Yeah, they found 22 heads there in Mexico, um, in um, Tabasco, in um, Veracruz, in La Venta. 
these are the three areas that they found these 22 gigantic heads that weighed um, tons. All right. So are they still um, there? Like, can we go visit? Yes, there's museums there um, in which that you can still go there and um, visit. Um, but the main ones is that's why we're trying to get a trip going to Mexico so that we can go to these particular places. We went last um, October, September, October, we went and wish that we went to three pyramid sites. All right. Um, we went to uh, Chichen Itza. We went to Tulum, Cabal, and um, I think they actually, yeah. So these are the um, actual areas that we went to. I'm um, be trying to get another trip going. Um, the yep, guy that she was. To, I'm about to say it's about to get solidified tonight. We just gotta play around with the dates, but um, we definitely gonna make that trip to the pyramids next in 2021. So y'all get right. get your funds ready. Go ahead and start saving up because it's gonna be something that you don't want to miss. True sure, indeed. Mm -hmm. We're trying to get different different ones. Oh, okay. All right. Any other questions? If not, I'm going to say good night to everyone. Good night. All right. Peace, sure. y'all. Hey, I'll tell you what to each. Okay, oh, 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 did you give the tiger's eyes? No, black onyx and no. clear quartz crystal. No. They didn't get it. So, which one can't find it? Ah. I look for it. You end it tonight earlier. This is the normal time you normally end. Yeah, this is the normal time. Sometimes we start late. Last time we started late. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> <laughs> 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 <laughs>